In this video, I'll walk you through the tools you need to work with the ML code in the repo associated with this video series. To get you started quickly, we've selected the most basic set of tools that require the least configuration by clicking on the Code button, opening the Code Spaces tab, and clicking the button to create the container. This container runs VS Code directly inside GitHub and is pre-configured with everything you need, such as Python. You can simply run Python 3 on your terminal, and the Windows Store will load and take you to Python. If you don't have it, macOS will give you the option to install it from the command line when you run the command Python 3 minus minus version. If you're using Linux, running Python 3 minus minus version will most likely tell you that Python is already pre-installed, depending on your version of Linux. We'll be using Jupyter Notebooks to do our work in this series. A Jupyter Notebook is a coding environment that can contain a mixture of text, code, and visualizations. To install VS Code, head to code.visualstudio.com and download the version for your OS. Jupyter Notebooks. From the Extensions view in the Activity bar, search for Python. Then install the extension pack. Depending on your operating system, you may need to install Git. We'll need it to clone the repository where the Jupyter Notebooks we'll be using in the video series. If you're using macOS or Linux, this should be pre-installed. If you're using Windows, you'll need to install it from gitforwindows.org. To work in the cloud, you'll click on Code, Code Spaces, and then Create Code Space on Main, which starts up VS Code within a remote container. To work locally, you'll clone the project to, to your own machine, which is what I'll be showing you here. a look at this empty Jupyter Notebook. Great, and now let's add a new cell with this Python code. We can then run the cell containing the code by clicking on the arrow to its left, and the code runs as you might expect. And in this video, we'll be using the VMV module. Let's start by looking at the help for VMV. As you can see, we just need to give the command the name of the directory where all our packages will live. It's common practice to call this directory .vmv and to include it within the project, so that's what we'll do. Let's navigate to the .vmv directory and look at the lib subdirectory. This is where the packages we'll install will end up. You might want to add the .vm directory to your .git ignore file so that you don't check in all of these files. So we'll activate the environment with this command. We can verify that these packages were installed by executing piplist and looking for each of them. Or you can just browse the lib directory. We can now tell VS Code to use the virtual environment that we just created as the interpreter to run the code in our notebook. Let's verify that, for example, NumPy is installed by executing some NumPy code. We'll first import it, then we'll create a 3x4 matrix, and then we'll print the first row. Great, our setup is done. And then click on the empty notebook. Activate the virtual environment and make sure it's selected in the notebook. We'll be using the diabetes dataset, which is a toy dataset built into scikit-learn for learning purposes. You can see here that the dataset has 442 data points or rows, each corresponding to a patient that has diabetes. The first 10 attributes or columns of this dataset correspond to age, sex, BMI, and other measurements for each of those patients. And the 11th column contains a numerical measure of disease progression after one year. Here's one way to visualize this data. Our goal for the simple project is to input a patient's BMI and to predict the disease progression for that patient after one year. Because the value we want to predict is numeric, we can use linear regression for this scenario. To load our dataset, we can use the datasets.loaddiabetes method from scikit-learn. Let's look at its documentation. We'll set return xy to true 
because we want a tuple containing the independent variables x, such as age, sex, BMI, as well as the dependent variable y, which is the measure of the disease. We'll keep the default for the other two parameters, which means we'll get the data as NumPy arrays and scikit-learn will, will automatically normalize them. Let's run the cell. The load diabetes method returns two NumPy arrays, one for x and another for y. Printing the shape of x confirms that we have 442 data points with 10 attributes each. And printing the first row gives us all the attribute values for our first patient. For this exercise, we want our x to contain just the BMI for the patients. We saw earlier that the BMI is the attribute with index 2. We can extract the column with index 2 to get a 1D array with the BMI data. We then use NumPy's reshape method to convert to a 2D array, which we need to train the regression model. Next, we'll split our data into training and test data sets. We'll use the training data set to train our linear regression model to come up with the right predictions. And we'll use the test data set to see how well the model can predict results for data not seen during training. We use two thirds of the data for training and one third for testing by specifying the test size parameter. We're now ready to create our linear regression model and to train it using the training data. We give it the BMI of several patients in X test and we get back predictions for the disease progress in Y pred. How good are our predictions? Let's use matplotlib to find out. In this graph, the actual Y test disease progress is shown in black and our prediction Y pred is in blue. As you can see, our predictions aren't 100% accurate every time, but they do represent the general trend of the data. 